chica. Alright, in this video we're going to take a look at using the division point formula. And the division point formula is used to determine the coordinates of a point locate a certain portion of the way between two other points. So we've already looked at the midpoint, uh, which is the point in the exact center, exactly halfway between the two points. With the division point formula now, we don't have to go exactly halfway. We could go any fraction uh, or portion of the way between the two points. So it's a lot much more versatile. The other thing I'll note here is you notice it says fraction at the top. I'm going to look in this example as um, if we're given our division point as a fraction. There's going to be another video out there for if you're giving your division point as a ratio. They're very similar, but there are a couple little differences, and I like to use slightly different formulas for them, so I've decided to do it in a separate video. Uh, so let's take a look at an example. So in this case, we're asked to find the coordinates of a point P that's located four-fifths of the way between points A and B uh, from B. So I'm going to do a little sketch of that here so we can see our two points. We can see the coordinate shown in, and we can see the line that's connecting them as well. Now, the first thing we need to note here is that we are, in fact, talking about a fraction. We can see it here four-fifths of the way. Again, if that was shown as a ratio, you should probably check out the other video because we'll use um, a slightly different formula for that. The other thing that's important to note right at the start is where you're starting from. So in this case, we're going from B towards A, maybe a little bit backwards. Usually, we probably think about starting at A and going towards B. So we're going to start at B, and we're going to go four-fifths of the way towards A. So it's going to leave us somewhere around here. Now, if we were to go from A towards B, we'd end up down here. So it would give us a whole different point. So it's important that we note that uh, right off. Now, before I show you the formula, I'm going to try and break this down a little bit. The formula looks a little bit messy, but when we break it down, we'll see it's not too bad. So whenever we're dealing with a diagonal motion like we are here, it can be kind of tricky. So I like to break things down into vectors. Now, all vectors are is we look at a horizontal component, so left and right, which is uh, connecting to our x-axis or our x-coordinates. And then we look at a vertical component up and down that's looking at our uh, y-axis or y-coordinates. And you can go from any two points here by breaking it down into a horizontal and a vertical component. So Let's take a look then. If I were to look at starting, I'll look at, say, horizontal first. We're starting at point B. And if I was to go all the way to point A, or all the way over, how far would I go? Would I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. If we were to go all the way, we would go 15 units. Oops, pardon me. Now, we don't want to go all the way here. We only want to go four-fifths of the way. So what is four-fifths of 15? Well, you can take out your calculator for that if you wanted. Instead, I'm going to say, well, one-fifth of 15, or 15 divided by 5 would be 3. And so four-fifths would be 3 times 4, which would be 12. So we don't want to go all the way. We only want to go four-fifths of the way. So I don't want to go 15 units over. I just want to go 12 units over. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that would take us to there. So we go over 12 units, and that would be four-fifths of our total. Well, and now let's look at our vertical component, up and down. Well, how far up would we go? Well, if we went the entire distance, we would go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the whole thing would be going up 10. But again, we don't want to go up 10. We only want to go up four-fifths. So what's four-fifths of 10? Well, 10 divided by 5 is 2, so one-fifth would be 2 times 4 would be 8. So we want to go up uh, 8 units. I'm going to do it right from where we left off here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So if we did this correct, whoops, pardon me. If we did this correct, our division point should be right around here. Maybe we'll do that in green. should be right around here. So uh, let's take a look then at our formula, and we'll see how this connects. So we, we actually have two formulas when we're looking at the division point. And that might seem complicated at first, but if we take a look at them closely, we'll notice that they're almost identical. The only difference is this one has all x's, this one has all y's. Well, why is that? Well, what did we do here? We looked at our x's first, and then we looked at our y's. So our formulas are really doing the same thing. First look at your x's, uh, and then look at your y's and do them separately. 
All right. Now, before we get started and jumping in values, I want to look at a couple things. So here we have x1. Well, x1, we got another one over here, refers to the point 1, which is actually our starting point. So which is our starting point here? In this case, it's actually b. Again, that seems a little bit backwards. I'm going to write it in, and I recommend that you write in um, your coordinates for the point. It's just going to make it easier to match up. It's going to give us less, uh, less likely to make an error, and uh, it's quite simple and quick to do. So we also have point 2, and point 2 is going to be our ending point, which in this case is, uh, is point 8. So again, I'm going to label this with x2 and, uh, and y2, and that's just so that we can distinguish the two points from one another. Now the last thing we have here is our a, uh, a over b, pardon me. A over b here just represents our fraction, I've already got it in yellow, which is 4 fifths. So 4 is, uh, a represents the numerator of your fraction, and b would represent your denominator. So that's all it's representing. So now we can just put in our values and solve for xp. xp, of course, is the, uh, I guess I could do that, do I? xp is our point p that we're trying to find out. So the x coordinate of point p that we're trying to find out. So what do we got? xp is what I want to find out. I don't know what it is. x1, that's my starting um, point, and my x coordinate of my starting point, which is 7. And down here we can see that's where we started. We start at 7. I'm going to add my fraction. Well, that's 4 fifths, so 4 over 5. And then I have to multiply that by the difference, so x2, which is negative 8, minus x1, which is 7. I'll close the bracket there. Now, when you're going for your next step, make sure you remember order of operations or bed mass. Brackets will have to do first. So make sure you do your brackets first. So I'm going to leave this as 7 plus 4 fifths. Negative 8 minus 7, well, that's negative 15. And we can see down here, wait a minute, we went left 15. So 15 represents how far we moved. The negative means it's to the left because that's where our values of our x coordinate are getting smaller. Again, don't forget, uh, next up, don't forget order of operations. Brackets we've done, now we look at multiplying and dividing. So we're going to take our 4 fifths and multiply that by negative 15. 7 plus. Now, uh, I'm going to do this in my head, but I'll also show you how you can do it on a calculator. So we want 4, divi uh, four fifths times negative 15. Well, 15 divided by 5 is 3 times 4 would be 12. Or in this case, it's actually going to be negative 12. So I'm going to I'm going to erase my positive here, and we'll put in negative 12. And that what that means is that we moved. We started at 7 which was um, the starting y value, and we move 12 to the left, minus 12 in the negative direction. And what do we end up with? We end up with negative 5. So our point P, which we said would be here, is going to have an x coordinate at negative 5. We can see that matches what we're seeing here. Well, same thing now. Let's go down to uh, our y value. I'm going to underline this so we got all uh, color-coded. P we've shown in green, and X2 is blue. And remember that our ratio, or fraction here, is uh, is in yellow. And now we can just fill in our values, and this time looking at our Y coordinate instead of our X coordinate. So negative 8, so YP, which is what we're trying to find out, negative 8, which is the Y coordinate. That's where we started, down here, negative 8, uh, plus 4 fifths, which is the fraction that we're going, and my brackets in y2, which in this case was 2, minus y1, the coordinate we started with. Now, I'm going to use square brackets here for the negative 8, because I don't like putting uh, two negative signs right next to each other. If they get a little bit sloppy, it's kind of hard to, hard to tell which is which. So we have negative 8 plus 4 fifths on a 2 minus negative 8. Well, if we subtract a negative, that's like adding. So 2 minus negative 8 is 10. And again, when we go over here, we went up 10. Positive, because we're going up as a positive direction, and 10 tells us how far we moved. Now, I'm going to use my calculator um, for the next piece here, just to show you how you can do it with your calculator as well. So the next thing we said we needed to do was multiply this out. 
So I'm going to bring up a calculator. Turn on, clear it off. And uh, a couple ways you can do it. You can put in your 4 over 5, or ratio, and a bracket's 10, which is exactly what I have shown. So I can put it in like that, and it gives us a value of 8. So I'll, uh, I'll write in our 8. So plus 8. And now another way that you could do it, and um, sometimes people, and depending if you don't have a display calculator, you can hit 4 fifths of your ratio and then hit equals, which gives you 0 0.8, and then multiply it by 10. It gives us the same value. Um, it's a good idea to practice maybe with a teacher or someone that can uh, make sure that you're putting things in correctly for the formula. Because if you do things in the wrong order, um, or if you don't put it exactly correct for your calculator, you're going to get the wrong answer, or you might get the wrong answer. So it's something to check with uh, your teacher. And the last thing we got here, negative 8 plus 8 equals 0. So we can go over to our point P and x coordinate of 0, which again is exactly uh, what we found here. Now before we go, I'm just going to show you one last thing. Uh, if you wanted, if you're in a bit of a hurry or you want to do this, you can actually put this entire thing into your calculator once you've filled in your values uh, as it's shown. So I'll, I'll do this one. And again, I recommend that um, if you're if you're going to try and do this, maybe check with your teacher to make sure that you're doing it correctly so you get the right answer. And um, depending on whether you have to be showing your work or how detailed you need to show your work, you may need to show all your steps like I did over here anyway. But I can actually put it in like this. So 7 plus 4 fifths, 4 divided by 5, bracket, negative 8, minus 7, and then close bracket, and boom, negative 5 gives us a value here. A little bit trickier down here um, because we have two brackets here. So um, in this case, oops, pardon me negative 8 plus 4 fifths, or ratio, or fraction, times, or brackets, 2 minus, now I'm going to put another bracket here for my negative 8. And then what you'll notice is a little bit tricky. I actually have to close my bracket twice. The first one closes the bracket around the negative 8, and the second one closes the bracket around the whole thing. And if we do that, we get a value of 0 as well. So there you go. That's the division point formula. If you're giving your division point as a fraction and if you're giving it as a ratio, there'll be another video for you to watch. So thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.